Welcome to the Awaken on Purpose podcast, where each week you'll hear inspirational stories of heart-centered leaders who have awakened to their higher purpose and taken that leap of faith to follow their heart and make an impact in the world. Get ready to be enlightened, empowered, and transformed with your host, Jennifer Spore. To welcome as a guest to the show today, Anne Sig. She is the author of three widely acclaimed books on how to attract customers online, and she's generated over 4.2 million in sales from her first ebook over 13 years ago. Anne's training has impacted hundreds of thousands of people worldwide to achieve online success all while working from home, but nothing has matched the rapid success of her e commerce students. It's not uncommon common for them to see cash flow in the first few days or weeks of starting their businesses. And others have achieved six, seven, and even eight-figure incomes, many through her free training alone. Anne is passionate to help a thousand people make $10,000 a month and build their own family economy working from home. Welcome, Anne. I'm excited to have you here today. Thank you, and I'm thrilled to be here. That's quite an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It's, uh, it's been many years, so it's not like I just started yesterday, lest someone think that I had this, you know, that right. all happened overnight. It was right. It was just, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Success definitely doesn't happen overnight. It requires diligence. So, Anne, I... I'd love to know, and I know the listeners would love to know too, what inspired you to actually get into the work that you're doing today? Um, Well, it originated back in 2004 when I shifted from offline to online. That was May of 2004. And specifically, the catalyst was I had as it was a work from home business at that time, um, which was direct sales and my business was struggling. And my eldest son who had, we were partnered somewhat through some business projects. He said, mom, you need to go online. And so that's what I did. And that's really the big game changer is I was looking for solutions. I wasn't finding it from people locally, trainers, leaders in the industry that I was in. What they said, it it started to sound illogical. It didn't make sense. It didn't add up. And I thought, well, there's got to be an answer somewhere. And my son, he had already since gone online and started to do research. So I came online. Initially, it was for that um, situation. It evolved into, oh, so much more, kind of all these stats that you just read off. But the catalyst was trying to solve a problem of essentially having enough people to talk to, to bring into my business. So what some might call lead acquisition. That's amazing. And I, you know, what you said about the need to go online, it is exceptionally relevant to the time that we're experiencing right now you know with the pandemic and everything that started a few months ago there are a lot of business owners that have had to pivot and and go online so it's become more important than than ever i feel like it's it's become a necessity at this Mm -hmm. point almost like even if you're a brick and mortar business um, there's still value in you having a presence online to an ex- a certain extent. Would mm-hmm. you agree with that? A thousand percent. Um, it should be and it should be imperative. And I've felt this way for years. You know, a traditional brick and mortar business needs to have an online presence. Um, I think it was Bill Gates who said, "If you're not online, you're not in business." And it, it's true. I mean, you. It's like what you don't have a website, or you know, it's like hello, (laughs) you know, especially we're two decades into the 21st century, but I would say it's absolutely essential um, because I'm really big on how to mitigate risk as a business owner. And part of that mitigate mitigate risk is you don't want to be on one legged stool that, for example, if all your traffic is offline, people coming in your store, for example, if you have a brick and mortar, you are on a one legged stool that 
who knows what could happen? COVID just happens to be extremely unusual. And many people had their leg, their one leg of the stool taken right out from underneath them and landed on the hard cement. So to me, it's, it's not even optional. It's an absolute mandatory part of your business. Absolutely. And even, I mean, even limiting yourself to say one social media platform, Mm -hmm. I think it's important to have, you know, at least a couple of of different places in addition to your website as to, you know, where you're focusing your efforts at. That's something that I've seen a lot, um, a lot of entrepreneurs focusing primarily on Facebook. Yes. Um, So that I would call multi-channel and it's akin to in the sourcing world. So in e-commerce, you have to source your products. That too was a very hard learned lesson during COVID-19 is as Americans, we discovered, and especially um, product suppliers, wholesalers, et cetera, is that we had a tremendous reliance upon China. So it was a big wake up call um, in that regard. And so it's it's called multi-channel, meaning you have to plan for what we're going to call worst case scenario because I've been online 15 years and we had brick and mortar businesses as well prior. Um, Anything and everything can happen. I always tell people right in your business plan, things will change. Just you have to plan that they'll change and they can change very, very quickly. Um, And so akin to sourcing, having different sourcing methods, for example, or sourcing locations, like you might go, it's called diversification, just like in a a portfolio, investment portfolio, you do risk mitigation by, you know, kind of having those variety of options that are there. But the same is true in terms of traffic. So your website is just one source of traffic. Then it's the social media channels are additional sources of traffic. And any one of those, something can go cattywampus. So it, and there's a certain timing that um, you have to use strategically, intelligently for when you layer in that next, you know, um, piece of safety, so to speak, or expansion. If you do too many at one time, you may very likely fail. But um, so it's being multi-channel in your efforts. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. Thank you. And I believe that every experience in our lives serves a higher purpose and and is part of shaping who we become. What experience has been most significant in your life in regard to shaping who you've become today? Ooh, wow. And I 100% agree with what you just said. And it's really, it's a leadership quality and attribute for people to develop is it's so imperative. And, and it's, it's going to be a struggle. But that being when the problems come along, you can say, woe is me. Or you go, you bootstrap and you go, well, this is interesting. (laughs) Wow, that's done, but what can I learn from it? Um, In terms of what was most pivotal, it wasn't really so much... um, uh, There's many, many incidences where life happened. You know, I was hit, you know, caught at the knee kind of a thing. There's several. But how you poised your question, what comes to mind, um, that really caused a big shift for me. I was, I've homeschooled my three sons. They're now... 30 and over. So, um, but when homeschooling them, I remember being at Barnes and Noble after I had dropped off one of my boys at a class. I can't remember what it was. And then it was just me and my younger son at Barnes and Noble. And I was walking down the center aisle and I'm an avid book reader. I love books. And so I'm walking down the aisle and this book just jumped out kind of like a banner ad and it was the colors and they may sound familiar as soon as I described the colors they were purple and black and gold okay those are the brand colors of Robert Kiyosaki and this is about golly goodness yeah about 20 years ago um and it said it was rich dad poor dad and it said what the rich parents know that the poor parents don't I think that was a subhead and I'm like say what and so you know he really caught me by the eyeballs on that just like a good well-written banner ad and i grabbed you know the book and i started thumbing through and i thought this looks good and i bought it 
And uh, my eldest was in high school at that time. And I read it and I bought another one. I bought Cashflow Quadrant. I told my eldest son, you need to read every book this guy has written. Subsequent to that is we then developed parallel paths of me in business and he was in business in high school. He did many, many businesses. And we ended up joining forces when he was age 18. So it was walking through Barnes and Noble, seeing a book cover, caught my eye, that that was, if you want to go back as an ultimate catalyst prior to coming online, that was the mega catalyst. And I was already a business owner, but I, it, I now had a new lens because of the cash flow quadrant. I now looked at the world differently because of this filter mechanism that he provided. There is so much to unpack from what you just said. <laughs> Two things mainly that come to mind from that. One is, you know, synchronicity. I don't believe that anything happens at random. You know, everything is is cause and effect. And then the other part of that, of what you said was that, you know, we will see certain things when we're ready to see them, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, who knows you could have walked by that book in that store or somewhere else yeah several other times you know prior to that but you may not have been ready to yeah see it at that point right mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing when you think about it. I, I never thought of it that way that how much changed because my eye caught that book or that book caught my eye <laughs> it's probably more the case and it's like kind of one of those moments where kind of the world shifts the, you know, for me. And then subsequent to that is the impact because then we became business partners, my son and I, and touched over half a million people's lives. It, it's, it's just like, uh, it's just amazing how one moment in time can just set your course. I, it, and then for such a time as this with COVID that I go, wow. Like this is total normal world for me being online, having a virtual team, homeschooling. I did that 12 years. This is, this is my normal that I've had for, you know, 25 years or so. And it's a brave new world for a lot of people now, but I guess meant for a purpose so that I could be a forerunner and turn around and help other people. Absolutely. That's the way that I, I view it as well. I've also, I mean, I started out, I haven't been in business as long for just a few years, but I started out online and, and thankfully that's the route that I went. My intent as the at the time for doing that was to uh, reach more people, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. It's the great magnifier. The, you know, online is... Yes the great or multiplier that one video you do one video can get a million views you know i mean looking at that potential i'm not saying everyone aim for that or expect that but and then two one video with one viewer can change even if it's just that one person it's can change so, your life. that's so true what you say you know that it's <laughs> It, it's smart to look at numbers, but it's not always all about the numbers either. When I think about where I've and how I've connected with clients, you know, or other people that I've collaborated with, in some cases, it's been from something I put out there that didn't have a lot of views, right? But it's really just all about synchronicity and being clear in your message, which I think being clear in your message is really important so that you can be visible for those you're meant to serve, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some call it message to market match. It's, it goes out like an arrow and it just you know, it's just that right person. I'm a, a firm believer in having a heart, heart based business, um, in part because my product is people. I develop entrepreneurs, e commerce sellers specifically, but it's, um, and, and subsequent to that, to my, my whole staff is a very heart felt staff for the fact that 
people by default, you will change as an entrepreneur. You're not going to be the same person. Hands down guarantee. If you're just entering into that world, you will change. And, and I'm not saying that in a way that should seem intimidating or sound negative. It's just that you will, you grow up and you, you play at a different game level because you carry all the risk. That's why there's not a safety net. It's you are. You are the net. Hey, welcome. Welcome to your new safety net, you. <laughs> so <Yes>. um, anyways, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, okay. You know, so it's, it's big bootstrapping um, world being an entrepreneur. But yeah, so we're very much a heart base because it's the individual that we're developing and they too in like kind as they have a heart for their business and how their business is going to serve them for their family's needs, et cetera, is really important because we want to, my goal is to strengthen the family. So I, by design, my messaging is a lot about the family and the family economy because the family unit has been undermined for quite some time now. And so if I can shore up the family unit, at least at the economic level, kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, hey, if they can't even pay their bill, how are they going to be self-actualizing at the top of the pyramid, you know? So to help them kind of simultaneously while developing as an entrepreneur, meeting their basic needs, paying their bills, etc., but self-actualize into a bigger better person, someone who can run a business and create jobs and create profitability is very praiseworthy. And for me, I feel it's my greatest contribution, if I may say at a, at a, uh, at a patriotic level, so to speak, that's my worthy contribution is to bring forth people who create economic powerhouses that are coming out of all these homes We've served 8,000 people in our, our membership. So all these independent families as an economic powerhouse, I'm more about empowering than I am handing, you know, the, the concept of handouts, it, is, it does not serve the best interest of the individual. It doesn't help them self-actualize and who their full potential is. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, you know, there's a lot of a great example of that, right, is in terms of personal development, there's a lot of free information out there. And free information can be amazing, right? It can be life changing if you're willing to apply it. But in many cases, I found that a lot of people don't value free information mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. because they're not being stretched to yeah. invest in themselves. It's not about spending mm -hmm. money. It's right. about them saying yes to themselves, right? Them having faith in themselves. It's also about um, the economic exchange and appreciation for the hard earned wisdom and knowledge and experience that someone has gained, yes. that there is an economic value to that, hence an economic, you know, a transaction, and it devalues and it's a, a lack of respect, if you will. And, and it's actually, to me, a sign of a student who is not ready when they remain in a bucket of, well, everything ought to be free. No, everything shouldn't be free. Things have been acquired, including people's knowledge and experience, at a hard, hard, steep cost, <laughs> I can assure you. And so it's worth it. Their experience has an economic value to it. And what does it do? It's, it's giving you their lessons learned so you don't have to go through them. What is that worth? Oh, I can't even yes. begin to tell you. Yes, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> I agree with you <laughs> wholeheartedly, right? It's like I'm a coach, you know, and a mentor for a lot of people. And uh, working with someone, investing and working with someone to support you on your path forward, you know, whatever path that is, it's expediting things. Mm -hmm. 
for you, Mm -hmm. you know, and also no matter who we are, each one of us has blind spots also. And so having the support of someone who's been where you want to go is priceless. It's priceless. Absolutely. It really is. I, I've, you know, consistently had coaches and mentors in my life, you know, throughout my journey of personal and spiritual growth and also in my own business. And uh, I'm not sure where I would be right now. Maybe not where I am. (laughs) I'm guessing. Me for sure. Me. In fact, when I first came online, I did join a training company, but it was a gentleman who quote unquote sponsored me into that. He was a fantastic coach and mentor. This was 16 years ago and now we work together. He's one of my top executives. And so that's from 16 years ago. And I know for a fact, had I not that had that more hand guided mentoring and guidance, no way. Uh, Because I will say I did also need the emotional support and sometimes that's the bigger game at play than there is this, the technical, you're learning the how to. Sometimes the bigger play is the mental game. In fact, they say going from, when you really go into scale, the, the hardest challenge in your business or the, the growth is it really gonna be incumbent upon your mindset. And that may sound like it's being overplayed, but you can self-sabotage pretty darn quickly when you're going into a terrain that you've never traversed before and that ability to talk yourself out of something even though you know at an intellectual level that it's for your benefit but your emotional well-being may not be as built up and as strong and this is where a coach can help you walk kind of navigate through those landmines so to speak Yes, I speak of mindset often as well. Mindset is really, I mean, the, the bigger part of the journey, in, in my opinion, as an entrepreneur. And there's also a huge uh, transformation that happens when you go from, because there's having an employee mindset, you know, and then there's having an entrepreneurial mindset. And even as a high level leader, right, in corporate, which is, which is where I was at in my prior career, despite having a lot of qualities in being a great leader, there's still, it's a different ball game Mm -hmm. when you own a business. Yeah, I always like to tell people, like, to me, it's somewhat of a red flag when people say, oh, yeah, you know, I just want to get off from under the man and, you know, I'm working for the man and, you know, this this kind of tone. And, I'll, and my thought is, yeah, well, take a look in the mirror. You just met your worst boss ever. I hope you're up for it. <laughs> right, because, yeah, the biggest thing that stands in the way is always just us. So, Anne, there are a lot of people, even more so, you know, with our current climate, that are at that crossroads, you know, feeling called to make that change, right? What would be your number one piece of advice for them to be able to take action today? Hmm. Oh, boy. So people are getting started. I I just have to, there's so many models out there. So I kind of have to just address that specifically that I'm just going to say for most people, when you're new, you don't have the global perspective when you're looking at that model to know if it's going to be a good fit for you. Um, So what I would say is that with a good business coach that can help you size up before you go into an endeavor, is that going to be the best model suited for you personally? Um, Because what can happen, and it happens a lot, is people get into a model because they tripped you into a sales funnel and they get sold on it and away they go. All of a sudden, they're going to be an Instagram influencer, you know, because of some ad that led them into a sales funnel and they're brand new. They've never been online. They've never been in business. But oh, this is how I'm going to make my living as being an um, Instagram influencer. And I'm saying this because I literally just got off a call not too long ago of ours, and they were all over the map, all over the map. And what's really important is to the context of that model and the skills that you bring to the table. And is there a good match? And so, you know, it's kind of, 
It is that space of you don't know what you don't know. And you can find yourself slipping into something that it's just like, oh, wow, so off kilter for what actually suits your, you know, at least some semblance of your abilities or your natural strengths that you would bring to the table to make that business model work. So I would say, you know, and I don't know really how many coaches are out there that do this kind of work where they can help evaluate. Um, I'll make a distinction here in this level. So we teach e-commerce specifically through Amazon. And I just spoke with two brand new clients and they're both, they were all over the web looking, 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 looking. And they both use this one term, which is branding. They both realize of all these many solutions, all of them required branding. Well, that means you better know lead generation, lead conversions. It's all the front end workload of a sales funnel. I know it very, very well. Converse, Amazon, they've done that sales funnel for you. You don't have to worry one iota over that. And it's a huge learning curve. So I guess I would just have to say someone who can properly assize the business model you are considering uh, getting into and if it's indeed a good match for your abilities. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely important. Uh, I'd like to go back to what you said about determining feasibility, right? There is more to that, I believe, Mm -hmm. you know, that before someone makes a decision to get into business, they should question their deeper motive behind what they're looking to do because if you're if you're getting into something especially in the service industry and you you think you're getting in it for the money (laughs) that's the wrong reason (laughs) that that is for sure because that's not necessarily a scalable business model so that's another factor too which would lead to asking you know what's your end game And this is where you can then better reverse engineer when you say, you spell it out, you write it out, here's how I want my business to serve me. Well, then the type of business you get into is going to be extremely important because some are more amenable to being scalable, hands-off, et cetera. The service one, uh uh-uh. No, me, I'm a teacher. I'm working with people. That's, it's scalable to the extent of reach, but it's, it's inputting my mental energy, knowledge energy into other people, which takes place in different forms, et cetera. But I would say it's really important that you're clear on that end game and outcome lifestyle wise, what you want. And they are, these business models vary a lot in terms of being able to reach that end game. And if service is what you want, then that's fine, right? It just is really more about what do you really want? And and to mm-hmm. your point about, you know, a lot of people do also, they aren't looking at the big picture from out of the gate. They're just looking at kind of what's right in front of them <laughs> right now. Yeah, well, yeah. And that would be that whole thing of people don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So, you know, you trip over a sales funnel and you're in deep and you're getting sold on it. And it could be so the outcome of that business could be so off kilter from what you truly want for your end game. So I'm glad you went deeper into that because I think that's another very important qualifier is where do you want to be? Where do you want your business to take you? Yes. I also believe at a more kind of spiritual level, you know, that each one of us has a higher purpose, right? And, Mm -hmm. and you alluded to this earlier in our conversation um, about someone looking at their strengths, right? That's what I believe. I believe that each person has gifts, right? Things that they're naturally good at along with learned skills and life experience. And if you feel, and that includes your beliefs and values as well. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. if you're aligned there, (laughs) when you're considering your business options, I believe that success is inevitable because you're aligned and then it becomes becomes a matter of working with the business coach on strategy, right? Beautifully said. I couldn't agree more in terms of that value congruency 
because by default, if you are in a state of incongruency, your, your physiology, your spirituality, however, you're this almost like screaming at you, no, 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 this isn't who we are, meaning you. Yeah. And, and you'll start to default out of that almost naturally and without maybe you knowing why, but it could be a value incongruency that's going on there. And your body is, the, uh, one term is homeostasis, is craving congruency with your values and alignment. Yes, absolutely. Well said there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and where is the best place for someone to find you if they want to learn more about you? We, we received some links that we'll include in the show notes, but where would be the best place for someone to get in touch with you? Uh, the best place, well, for me personally, you can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn. So my name, Ann Sieg, where I work is at the e-commerce business school is the name of our training and mentorship platform, e-commerce business school. A short link is just join ebs.com. It takes you to our home page. Um, and that's where my heart and service is at, um, is, um, in, this, in that unique business model and helping people develop as entrepreneurs. Um, but I am on LinkedIn and Facebook if you know, people want to reach me more on an individual level as well. Wonderful. And thank you so much for coming on as a guest to the show today and for sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom. I really enjoyed our conversation and I know that the listeners will too. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. We're, we are like... <laughs> very sure like-minded I feel like we sure are thanks so much thank you for listening to the awake and on purpose podcast please visit us and subscribe to the podcast at awake and on purpose.com so you never miss an episode to learn more about how you can connect with your higher purpose and take that leap of faith to make your impact in the world visit us at jennifer spore spor.com and while you're there be sure to join our email list for exclusive offers and a weekly dose of inspiration 